Kent, it's Darley Moor, first race of the season and it's cold, it says it's about 7 or 8 degrees, not with this wind chill it's not, it's probably closer to 2 or 3, I'm a little bit nervous, got a few teammates here though so it's good to see a few people in Velibre varying colours because last year when I raced for VVCC I was the only guy, I was the only person in the, the blue kit so it was a little bit lonely at times so it's nice to see people in the same kit as me. So, skin suit's on, number's been pinned on by one of my teammates, bike's ready, I'm almost ready. Let's do a few laps of warm-up. Actually, I'm just going to sit in the warmth for a few minutes, just to sort of gather my thoughts, because I am I'm a bit more nervous than I thought I was going to be, to be honest. Yes, it's the first race of the season, so I guess everyone's got a few little nerves. Um, no one's really sure about you sort of eyeing up the other riders, thinking, oh, they look strong, they look fit, they look slimmer than me, probably stronger than me, but, you know... I think I've worked pretty hard, well I know I've worked hard through winter, so this is, it's a bit of a test now, how well has my winter training paid off? We're going to find out, um, the track I think it's not completely dry, not been out to have a look at it yet, but just looking at the um, the, the road through the, uh, the paddock here, it, it's a little bit damp, but it's not wet as such, so could make cornering interesting, could be a little bit slippy out there, um, but couple of laps of warm-up and I think that's going to be my nerves will be settled I'm sure and then once the race gets started your nerves just disappear anyway and that's it and you're just concentrating on keeping your line holding your position and then trying on that last lap to get in the best position you possibly can and hopefully be on the right wheel coming out of the final corner and up to the chicane and then the start line well the finish line so okay right I'm going to go now I need to get on my bike um, stop chattering away and just get on that bike and just get out into this cold. See you in a bit. Welcome, mate. Have you got a sec? Yes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. We've got to get the... Got to get the new kit on. I feel under pressure now because you do this stuff properly. You think about how to put a video together and what you're saying and stuff. Do I? And I sort of just well, wing it. the thing know? is, it's like years of being head of media at football uh, clubs. Okay, so, you right. know, I kind of got used to doing interviews and stuff. So, anyway, go on. So, no pressure. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> There's a link in the description down below. This guy, Craig Ghost, Craig Ghost Cycling, new, newly launched YouTube channel in the last yes, month or so. Yeah, about a month ago, yeah. I thought I'd try and mm -hmm. just log my journey this year. So, yeah, it's been an interesting point to how I got to this point yeah. from where I was four years ago, mm -hmm. 17 stone and, yeah, yeah massively fit. But I thought I'd try and go at just logging things and see how I go and Good get stuff. racing. So your plan for this year is what? What are you hoping to do? All of the races here. So there's eight rounds here, and by the end of it, I want my Cat 3. Awesome. I want Cat 3. Um, if it takes all eight races, it takes all eight races. Yeah. If we get it so, quicker, brilliant. Awesome to have an objective. Yeah. So you've got to get 12 points, which is it's 10 points for a first, eight points for a second, then it slides down. So however you do that is up yeah, to you throughout the year. It, so yeah. awesome. Good stuff. Have a great race. See you Cheers. Out Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. No worries.
How's your race? Bullshit. <laughs> there's a lot of, this is a family channel, there's a lot of bleeping going on. <laughs> Very sorry. Um, I, well, I got off to a really bad start because I could not get my left foot in. Oh, I didn't clip right. into the first corner, yeah. then I'm, I'm at the back, mm -hmm. and then the jump went, yeah. and I was at the back and I missed it. You are in the second group though, weren't you? I think you are in the second group. There was a oh, that, right that's wishful thinking. Yeah, I think there was, a right, <laughs> off, there was a right off the front, and then a group of yeah. four or five, and then your group. Right. And no, I think we were. I, think, I, I, don't know, I thought it was a group back so from that. But, we were in the group. Oh, but right. it was, yeah, that was a baptism of fire. I'm yeah. not. I'm not going to lie. That was. <laughs> that's the first Cat Four race I've ever done here yeah. that has that has split like that. Normally, yeah, it's yeah. a bunch finish, mm. and I genuinely believe that I've. We were working consistently harder in that race than you'd normally do in a Cat yeah. Four because you're on it all the time. Where yeah. normally you'd get a bit of a rest yeah. and then there'd be an attack but sure. not today yeah. it was just because yeah. we were in the group of about eight of us was yeah, it yeah, yeah. it was just are you feeling yeah. better about your performance do you feel yeah, good in yourself yeah, I do actually yeah I feel yeah I do I feel strong Wicked. I, and I think if I'd managed to stay hang on, hang on. Oh, I think, I think if I hadn't yeah. got off the back you know if I'd yeah. clipped him better and I got a better start yeah. maybe I could have stayed with the next group up the road well fortunately you can come again next week <laughs> yes I'll be here don't worry I'll awesome be here. Nice thank you very much well done Mark, first race. Well, I'm not going to lie, that was an absolute baptism of fire today. Um, couldn't clip in on the start, so it took me until halfway around the first corner to get my left foot clipped in. Um, so I found myself at the back, going into a massive headwind. Um, saw a couple of the riders starting to move up, first lap, and I thought, no, no, nothing's going to go yet. So up the first straight, up into the hairpin, and towards the hairpin, and then coming out, it just went. Uh, and there was a few riders attack. And it just it strung out so bad and it was three groups within the first lap um and found myself in group three and but i genuinely think that today worked harder more consistently more consistent hard work today than in any other cat four race here so it'd be interesting to when i get home to have a look back on some of the old rides from last year see what sort of average speeds were because i'm convinced that today was working in the third group was harder um, than it has been before and i've never seen a cat four race break up like that here before it all, any breakaway always comes back there's always a bunch sprint today just didn't happen they missed the move that was it so i am disappointed but there's only a week to go to put it right so yeah let's go and have a look at the uh, e123 race now then there's a couple of our vv riders in that and there's dylan air as well from ilson cc so be interesting to see how he goes 16 year old so let's go and have a watch of this race it's about to do a lego then wasn't it so darling moore our race is over done finished the um e123 race is on now and it's fast glad i'm not in that one anyway i'm with lee shaw one of the vb riders who finished third place today in what was the hardest cat four race yeah. i've ever done here lee how did you find that uh hard um the headwind was something else wasn't it oh, I, I i've never known that it was like that. in your beard so <laughs> nearly blew it off yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean going up this this like incline here the headwind must have been it felt 20 30 mile an hour didn't yeah. it and we thought the break might happen there but surprisingly we got round the bend the first bend and then i seen a two riders and then pinged it with them and then five was got away on lap one and seemed to keep it for the whole race so yeah i'm tough with it i'm good workout yeah cobwebs below well you can't you can't fall, you know first race of the season you're on the podium yeah. it's got to feel good hasn't it yeah, yeah, so definitely. what's that is that, is that eight points or something yeah eight, eight points so four more and then i've got my cat three sit so and no more sandbagging so uh, <laughs> so this time next week then that's it you'll be yeah. cat three won't you because yes. you're gonna Hopefully. you're gonna get at least the top five again next week oh, the way you were riding well i'm gonna i'm in the three four next week um, all right yeah okay. so i thought give it a go right so see see how we get on okay well good luck for next week Lee. thanks Lee. and uh yeah are you heading down to the shop at all today uh, no i'm too busy got kids so right. uh, i will be popping in sometime soon all right okay thanks, nice one. well done Lee. <laughs> Right then, race at Dali is done, so now it's on to the second part of today and we are at 
the new Vela Bavarian shop in Milford, Derbyshire. So it's the grand opening today, the official opening day. So let's have a wander inside and see what Luke, Matt, Jimmy and the rest of the team have got for us. shop here in Milford, Derbyshire. Um, I'm with Matt, the shop manager. I believe that is your official title here. You have created here, yourself, Luke, Jimmy, the whole team have created a shop, which I have, I won't tire of telling people this. If you were on Oxford Street in London and walked through this door, this would not feel out of place there. How do you feel about this shop? Yeah, I mean, like, like we're lucky to work in this environment for sure. Like, I joined Bella Bavaria nine months ago with the premise of coming to manage the new store. I've been volunteering with the race team, who approached me to help with that, and then I was actually looking for a job. But he approached me and said, "Would you be interested in the role of managing the new store?" And I was like, "Well, I'm not really looking for a job." But we had a few conversations, and I could see as. Craig alluded to, especially in his Darling Moore video, like the passion that Luke's has and he wants to deliver um, something, you know, and that's, he wants to deliver lots of things, you know, like Mr. Race Team, you know, ladies' uh, rides and all the things I know that Craig's been really passionate about in the videos. And he sort of got me on board um, and yeah, signed up to, to say yes, I'll come and, uh, come and help him. And he's, he had a very clear vision. Obviously, when we came into this building, it didn't look anything like it does now. But we both had this shared vision I brought into what Luke was wanting to, to achieve and get out of this shop. And yeah, I mean, for those that have seen any of the previous content and stuff that we put out of the old shop, it's literally from one end of the scale to the other. You know, it was an adapted building that was, you know, that had bikes in it, that like yeah. created a bespoke space where. Where, you know, everything has got space to breathe and we can show off the vibes and the brands and you know, we've got some great confidence here today and I've kind of equated that we're, um, we're like a, a public free house where like, we choose the brands um, so what you see around us is like the brands that we like um, the people that we want to work with and those that want to work with us and that's the collaborative nature of BB and that extends to not just the shop um, but also the race team and yeah. people that come and get involved and you know, those people that are on our social rides or you know, they're racing for the race that have been in the dark this morning and you know all the things that we're, that, so we're trying to achieve and um, like we're all we're a very small team. I don't want to waffle on too long. Yeah. On Craig's, Craig's video. That's we're, right. You keep going. You, you're passionate. You can tell that you're passionate about this as well. Uh, we're, we're a small team of three. Um, you know, it's been a lot of work. You know, we're all you know kind of behind the vision to deliver um, what what we hopefully have delivered. And yeah, we, we need to like move forward now. And we do that with the support of our customers, which we're always very grateful for people that come in and spend money. We make no bones about it that we're a, we're a commercial venture. We, we we want to do things in the community and. On social lives and inclusivity, but you know, we, yeah. we, we are a business and, and we rely on those people that come in and uh, you know, buy bikes from us, buy our kits, and, and all the rest of it. So, we'll always remain incredibly grateful for people to come in. And now we've got this amazing space and environment where people they can come and they can browse. And you know, for our, our club members, Luke works very hard again. You know, it's some incredible deals, whether it's the, the Sturk and Nutrition, the partnership with Cask Helmets, we get rid of corporate and commercial. Yeah, no. like, the Koo Shoes, I feel like we work very hard to, to work with the brands yeah. we, we collaborate with. We can offer things to our members that go above and beyond just going online and getting a discount. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's much more to it than, you know, 
than that. So I think something that you said about a minute ago was about space to breathe. Yeah. You look around these bikes now, and you can you can get around them. You can see every bike. It's not just a bunch of bikes crammed together on the floor. Which you know the old VV shop was like that. But like I would say, it was a space that just it was usable at the time. But now you look at the bikes that are here now. They're displayed well. It's it really does have that boutique feel about it, and it's good for the customer that can come in here and you can see everything of the bike. You can get around it and really get into it. And along with that as well, I think for me, talking about the race team and the cycle club and the community feel, yes, this is Luke's shop, yours and Jimmy's as well, but it feels to me like this is part, it, it, this is our base. This is where us as VV race team, VV cycle club, social member, right? This is, you know, somewhere to call. This is this is our place as well, I think. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm why I always like emphasize people is like, you know, there's much more to building a community than putting on a weekly group ride. You know, that's that's easy to put on the social yeah. media, but the amount of work that Luke puts into you know, the, the community and you know everything that goes on behind the scenes is like is what really creates that feel of not just turning up to a group ride, you know. Um, you know, and again we are super grateful to everyone that gets involved, Craig, you know, he's one of dozens of people, like literally dozens of people that turn up to ride and you're know, like, yeah. If you're in the area, you want to check Facebook, get involved, check out our Strava page, which is where all the rides are advertised. I know Craig and Tesla, but like genuinely for, for this guy, for everyone out there, he's been involved with all you guys, from all of us. We are super grateful and hopefully we will see you in the coming weeks in our amazing new shop. Right, thank you very much, thank Mark. You, right, I will you. let you thank get you. back off and yeah. do your job. So, yeah, that was great. We've had a little chat with Matt there. Just He's, he's very enthusiastic about this new place as I think everyone should be and everyone should be really proud of what they've done here um, it's a superb looking place an amazing space so for myself um, as part of the Bavarian race team this does feel like we have a home we have a base here which is really cool um, so if you are interested and again I think I, I dropped the link in my last video I'll do it again I'll put a link below to the, to the website and to their Instagram page so if you're looking for a cycle club, if you're in the Derbyshire area or even further afield than that, you'll be made more than welcome here. So we're a decent bunch. Yes, I might look a little bit scary with my long beard and bald head, but I'm quite a nice person. And everyone here will welcome you with open arms. So, Okay, so the next part of the new VB shop, we're going to go down into the workshop. Nice sounding motor behind me there. Pretty cool, isn't it? I know, not as nice as a nice new bike. Anyway, we're going to drop into the workshop and we're going to have a little chat with Jimmy and he's going to show us around his brand new workspace. Here he is, the man of the moment. So, back at the old shop, you used to have that little conservatory area. Yes. Very small, very compact and bijou. And now, what have you got? Now, I think, <laughs> well, I've got my workshop, my sort of dream workshop that I've sort of pretty much designed mostly myself really, yeah. me and Luke together with a um, with sort of the handyman that helped us put it all together as yeah. well. Um, I've sort of got everything I need, uh, still got a few things to iron out because I've yeah. only just opened this week, um, but yeah. So how much easier will this make your job then, having somewhere a work, I mean because the space that we're standing in now mm -hmm. is probably bigger Oh yes. Than the workshop you had before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, definitely. Uh, so this is the main workshop area then. This yeah. Part so, here, so in a in a sense, I'm gonna have my two stands. Uh, there's gonna be a, a better stand in the corner, which the TT bike is where the TT bike currently is. Um, and then yeah, I'm predominantly gonna be working here. We're going to have a, an apprentice that will be working alongside me a couple of days a week. That will be more his stand, or if someone walks in and says, "Can yeah. you just?" Yeah, <laughs> they will kind of go in that yeah. stand. Um, but in a sense, yeah, I do more my smaller jobs on my bench, some wheel truing and stuff, and it's more it's more efficient of you know, sort of how I want it kind of thing. You know, I've got a parts washer now. We didn't have a parts washer at the last shop, so I can kind of <clears throat> put sort of non electrical or um, clutch parts, you know, in that in that kind of thing. Uh, give it a proper clean up without having to sort yeah. of be there scrubbing yeah. or anything like that as, a, as such and yeah just a lot more storage of the bikes inside so um, if we go through this door what do we yeah. find then if we go through here so there is a lot of current bikes that sort of normally upstairs because of how it is upstairs we don't 
these ones don't fit upstairs at the minute. Uh, so this will be a bit more filled out soon with sort of more cassettes and chains as I sort of uh, get time to probably sit down and work out what we need. Um, then we have service bikes. So all these bikes in here are, are waiting to be serviced. These are my next, this next week basically. Um, so big jobs, small jobs, whatever. Yep. Some are in the process of waiting for parts. Yep. Then I have my parts washer I just spoke about. Yep. So it's for cleaning bikes. Uh, and then I have just storage of, of items. Yep. We have loads and loads of these cupboards now where I can put things, you know, parts, some bigger tools that I don't use very often and stuff like that. And then I have a feature wall, which I, I, I quite like, which is where I'm going to obviously have my custom builds laid out. Uh, already done one in here at the minute, just done a Col Colnago C68. Um, and we're going to get little boards that we can put down for the brand of the build. So yeah. um, at the moment it's a pin around a wall, but um, this is obviously just a landscape. So I could put a Colnago board in front of it, I could put a Merida, yeah. I can put whatever brand <clears throat> it is. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking these few minutes just to show us uh, your workshop. And uh, are you happy with the new place? Then? I'm loving it. Yes. Yeah. How, <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, ten being great, how much better than the old workshop is it? It's a ten, I think. Yeah. yeah. The old workshop was it was just small and not how I wanted yeah. it, basically. And now everything is sort yeah. of where I want it. <laughs> nice and new and shiny Definitely. for you. Anyway, well, thank you very much for taking this, this time no today, Jimmy. And it's great to see the new shop. Thank and you. well done on the work of everyone here. Cheers. Brilliant. Thank you. So we've had a quick chat with Matt, the shop manager, and we've had a word with Jimmy and a look at his nice new shiny workshop that he's very pleased about. So I thought we'd best grab Luke just for a couple of minutes. Um, Luke, you must be proud of what you've got here. Yeah, really happy. Really, really happy. Yeah. And the reception's been amazing. So, yeah. so how much planning and thought, I mean, because I know you talked about this place quite a while, you know, moving shop a while ago. Yeah. So has it been a, a more difficult process than you thought it was going to be, or did you expect it to be a long process? I, I made a transformation video that you probably see yes. on Instagram. It's a great pop the link in the description. And um, you can see, <laughs> sorry, yeah. you're giving your jobs. No, no, it's fine, I, it's yeah. all right. So, oh. <laughs> Volunteer. Take, take no. it over the channel. <laughs> so, when, when I look at the videos from how it was to how it is now, it makes me think, God, like, how, like, how is that happening? And how sort of audacious was it to go, to think that it was yeah. possible? Because if I, if I looked at it now, I wouldn't do it again. Really? <laughs> yeah. Time's over, like, No. I just think it's like, it was that naivety that yeah. made me think, oh, we'll just do that. Just do that. And it's just yeah. taken so long and such hard work, so more than I thought it was going to take. But we're here now yeah. and it's doing so. I think that naivety sometimes can be a blessing because without that naivety, you might, like you say, you think, oh God, no, it's going to be such a big job, I'm never going to be able to pull it off. Yeah. But if you've got that naivety of thinking, oh yeah, what's the, yeah, just get a shot, put some walls up there, some bikes in it, yeah. and it's never that easy, but you know, you did it. It's, it's like somebody said, oh, it must feel surreal. And I said, yeah, it feels like, you know, I could be in a dream and like you could, you know, pinch me and I wake up. And the nightmare would be, not going back to 12 months ago before we started, if you go back to six months ago, being in the middle of it, and like half, you know, yeah. you're going through hell sort of thing, you know, they sell the old phrase, if you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah. Um, but it was that, you know, middle patch where we've not just started, so we had all the enthusiasm, it was really hard, there was lots yeah. to do, and it was so busy, that was the hard bit. Yeah. Um, so at the start, I did fantastic, but yeah, we're, we're here now, and it's 12, about 12 months in the making, yeah. Yeah, to see it now, it's been worth it. So, what you've got here now obviously looks stunning. Have you got any plans to do more to this place? Um, it's exactly as I wanted, exactly. yeah, as I planned. Initially, we were talking about having a cafe in the, the shop. And I thought I'd heard that somewhere, then I was thinking people had me guessing, thinking I would, I'd got that wrong. As we as we grew and as the shop grew, we didn't we realised we didn't have space for a cafe, and like yeah. we actually, you know, we needed the space for the shop. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, we're we're, we're a bike shop, and we get tracks on that. You know, we're a small team, we wanted to put our emphasis on, on doing what we do well, which is, um, you know, servicing people. Yeah. And, you know, um, yeah, being a point of call for people who need bikes or anything like that. So we didn't want to detract from that. But the long-term plans, you know, we've got a bit of space downstairs, um, we've got a bit of storage, so possibly in the future. Um, but we'll just continue to get better and better as yeah. we uh, settle in. Okay, well, Luke, thank you again for Thanks, just taking a, a few minutes out of your very no busy worries. day to join no me worries. for this. And good luck 
and I'm sure this is going to be a raging success. It's going to be. Anyway, thank you very much, Luke. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.